Today I'm going to talk about renal clearance. Clearance is based on the concept of mass balance. In other words, what goes in must come out. What goes in is found in the arteries. Blood using the kidney is the entry point, and that equals the amount coming out. Now, it can either come out in the veins or it can come out in the urine. The sum of these two exit routes must equal the entry route. We also assuming that the kidney does not produce or consume the substance. So the only route for entry is the renal artery. The only route for exit is either the renal vein or the urine or both. Clearance of any substance we'll call X is then described by this equation down here. The clearance of X equals the urine concentration of X times urine flow divided by the arterial plasma concentration of that substance X. What I'm going to do now is rearrange the equation because this doesn't mean much to people. But if we rearrange the equation, what we're now looking at is the urine concentration of substance X divided by the arterial plasma concentration of substance X. That is a ratio, which gives us a fractional concentration of the substance cleared. Ux over Px is a ratio. It's a unitless ratio. We multiply that ratio by urine flow, and now we get a rate of clearance. First thing we're going to look at is the clearance of something called inulin. The reason we can determine the GFR from inulin is because inulin is filtered, but it is neither reabsorbed nor secreted. The only route for inulin in the urine comes from filtration. So let's look at this. We have to accept that the amount filtered must equal the amount excreted. What comes out into the tubes, the only place it can go is into the urine. The amount filtered is described by the plasma concentration of inulin times GFR. And the amount excreted is dependent upon the urine concentration of inulin times urine flow. We can rearrange this formula and calculate GFR. GFR then equals the urine concentration of inulin times urine flow divided by the plasma concentration of inulin. We can see that that's exactly the same as our calculation of clearance of inulin. The clearance of any substance X, in this case inulin, must equal the urine concentration of that substance times urine flow divided by the plasma concentration of inulin. These two equations are identical. Therefore, GFR must equal the clearance of inulin. Once we calculate the clearance of inulin, we now know GFR. Some people use creatinine as a substitute for inulin. Creatinine, like inulin, is neither reabsorbed nor secreted. Therefore, all of the creatinine found in the urine must have been filtered. So the clearance of creatinine equals the filtration of creatinine. Creatinine is the metabolic breakdown of creatine. The only issue that might arise would be if creatinine concentration in the plasma varied over time, which it may do, but over the short period of time of our measurements, we can assume that plasma creatinine concentration that we measured then must be constant over this short period of time. So let's look a little bit here at glucose handling. Here we've got a plasma glucose concentration of one milligram per milliliter. And if we look at the way glucose test meters record it, it's in milligrams per deciliter. Therefore, this would be the same as 100 milligrams per deciliter. So we have this one milligram coming in. Renal plasma flow is 700 milliliters per minute. We're filtering 100 milligrams per minute. Our GFR is 100 mils per minute times 1 milligram per mil. We're filtering 100 milligrams per minute. We're reabsorbing 100 milligrams per minute. We reabsorb virtually all the glucose that's filtered until the glucose concentration rises to exceed the maximum reabsorption rate, T sub M, maximum transport rate. And that's at 375 milligrams per minute. So we filter 100, we reabsorb 100, there's no secretion of glucose. So we end up with nothing coming out in the urine. Urine concentration times urine flow is zero, clearance is zero. Let's increase the plasma concentration to five milligrams per milliliter. This, by the way, would be 500 milligrams per deciliter. Now we have 3,500 milligrams per minute flowing through the arterial circulation. Again, GFR is still 100 milliliters per minute, so our filtration rate is going to be 5 times 100, or 500 milligrams per minute. Unfortunately, we can only reabsorb 375 milligrams per minute back into the circulation. Again, there's no secretion of glucose. So what we end up with then is 500 minus 375. There's 125 milligrams per minute of glucose coming out through the urine. If we take that 125 
divide by the plasma concentration, we have a clearance of 25 milliliters per minute. Glucose clearance is increasing because we cannot reabsorb all of that glucose. That, by the way, is a significantly large amount of glucose for the plasma. We look here at our plasma glucose concentration. We can see, once again, as plasma glucose rises, the filtration rises as well. As we look over here at the reabsorption rate in black, we are reabsorbing everything. We reach a splay here in which the reabsorption begins to decrease until it reaches its maximum of 375 milligrams per minute. Reabsorption rate now cannot increase. We continually reabsorb 375 milligrams per minute. So we look down here at the excretion rate. We're excreting nothing. And suddenly at the splay where we begin to turn, we see the beginning of glucose appearing in the urine. And at this point, at a plasma glucose concentration of about 275 milligrams per deciliter, we have an excretion rate of glucose which exactly follows now the filtered load. We talked about the clearance of an individual particle. It could be glucose, it could be inulin. What we're going to talk about now is the clearance of all osmolites. So we're talking about the clearance of all osmolites equals the urine concentration of all osmolites divided by the plasma concentration of all the osmolites times urine flow. This is our standard clearance equation. The urine flow must equal, then, the clearance of water plus the clearance of the osmolites. The urine contains both water and osmolites. Urine flow equals the clearance of water plus the clearance of osmolites. And we can then look at the clearance of water equals urine flow minus the clearance of osmolites. The clearance of free water is positive for dilate urine and negative for concentrated urine. I'm going to use these diagrams to try to explain free water. Assume that this top beaker has a sample of plasma in it, and this color represents the plasma osmolarity. Down here, we can see a concentrated urine, a darker color. To bring it back up to the same osmolarity as plasma, the amount of free water that I added was free water that you had retained. And the retention of free water would help to dilute down a hyperosmotic plasma. Now, the opposite is also true. Here I have a dilute urine, so the kidney is attempting to get rid of excess water. And if I were able to split this urine into two beakers, that is, evaporate water from here and then recollect it over here, I'm left with urine that has the same osmolarity as plasma plus free water with no solutes. This is free water excreted in an attempt to bring up plasma osmolarity. 